Hi, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I just thought I'd share a little bit uh, more today along the lines of my um, bird photography books and books about bird photographers. And um, I was really excited a couple of days ago when a friend of mine who I hadn't seen for some time called in with his son who's in his 30s, who um, works in the environment sector. And he was very excited when he came in here and saw all my bird books. And uh, I'm excited about them too. So I'd like to share them with people over, over this channel, uh, some of the ones you can get and, and around. I mean, most of mine are Australian books, although I've got a few overseas titles as well. So I was just walking out of here the other night. I like to have a little glance at a book sometimes before I go to bed of a night time, getting away from YouTube eyes. <laughs> and um, I uh, came across this one I'm going to share with you now. <coughs> and it's... um. It's this one here. It's called In Search of, no, In Quest, In Quest of Bowerbirds. And it's by uh, Norman Chaffer. And uh, it's a, a, a book. This man has long since died. He died in about, uh, in fact, I've got an obituary here. He died in 1992. I've got a printed out obituary there. I might come back to a little bit of that. But uh, I always like it. This book came out of a library, obviously, out of the Camberwell Waverley Regional Library in Victoria. And I love when I get secondhand books from bookshops. You get little notes in them sometimes, <coughs> and sometimes they're written in. This one says, Helen, this book is from Georgie. She got it at the market for you. We haven't had time to come down, hence the posting. See you in a couple of months, hopefully. Marg, there you go. So Marg sent that to Helen. And... Uh, I'm sure Helen enjoyed it for a while anyway before it ended up on, in, the, uh, in the markets. So bowerbirds, probably people don't know too much about bowerbirds if you come from another country, but bowerbirds, I don't know whether they're actually unique to, um, I should have a look and see, I don't know whether they're actually unique to Australia, but uh, there's a few species of them, about seven I think maybe, and um, they are birds that, uh, like a lot of other birds, they actually um, have a little nest like a display and it's they call these things bowers. I'll show you some pictures in a minute. And the bowers are sort of shaped out of the, the grasses and they put all sorts of trinkets in them. And sometimes they, they, they do also, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about it in a minute, but let me just have a look. Bower birds meet the world's, meet the bird world's kleptomaniac because they collect things and pinch things from your, you know, they can put car keys, they put things on display in their bower to attract the female. And uh, in fact, I'll just show you this picture up here, which has just come up on my screen here. If I can just uh, share the screen with you, just bear with me. Share the screen. And now I put that up there. And you might be able to see that there, bowerbirds meet the world's kleptomaniac love architects. And there you can see a, a bowerbird. Um, and that's a male and a female, and you see the grass, how it comes up. Oh, no, this is, this is actually the satin bower, but I've, I've actually seen these and photographed these. The green one is the female, and the uh, purple-blue one is the, um, the male. And uh, they decorate these um, bowers with all sorts of um, trinkets and things and coloured things. Uh, predominantly, the, the colour blue is collected by the satin bower bird. And uh, they're beautiful birds. And I've seen them over in Canberra, in the Canberra Botanic Gardens, nesting over there. It's where I got my shots. Anyway, I'll stop the sharing now. So, so bower birds. This this man here. I'll, I'll read a little bit about Norman Chaffer before I show you some of the book. Uh, Norman Chaffer, one of the great pioneers of Australian nature photography and conservation education. Uh, he died aged 93 on the 23rd of November 1992. Uh, born in 1899 at Willoughby, Sydney, his interest in nature found early expression in the adjacent bushlands of the North Shore, such that by 1919 he was already photographing native birds in their haunts. An early photograph was of a white-browed scrub wren taken at the Wallace Lake campout in 1992. And this was followed by an additional 55 speedies over the next uh, 40 years. Early success with uh, heavy sensitized glass plates and black and white led to pioneer experiments with nature color photography. 
Norman ever ready to introduce the latest ideas and techniques had by the late 1940s and 1950 accumulated color photographs of over 100 species. He then moved into 16 millimeter color cinematography. He did a lot of movies as well. And uh, so in the early days of, of bird photography in Australia, he was a well-known identity and he was an, a mentor and encourager to many others just starting out. So it just opened up. Um, well, there you are. There's, there's the, uh, the satin bower bird that we were looking at before um, with its bower and uh, the female in the nest there. Um, He took other types of birds as well. I mean, uh, we have, what are we here? Facing bowers of this species, bower bird. This one on the left is a, uh, I think it's the regent bower bird. The one, the uh, black and yellow one, very striking bird. And uh, there's some other birds there that aren't bower birds, but um, rainbow lorikeet, etc. Look at the trouble that people used to go to in the early days of bird photography. They'd go up, well, they still probably do this to a certain extent. See that ladder going up into the tree? They'd camp out and go up into the tree opposite another tree where a nest would be and take photos. Now, all these guys were in the um, days, of course, before digital photography. And uh, they were amazing. The great bower bird he's got here, I've seen them up around Darwin in, in the Northern Territory. And they're a sort of a a grey sort of a bird. There you are. There's the, the great bower bird. That's the biggest of the bower bird species. Now I was trying to find out whether um, they were in other parts of the world, whether, I mean, lyre birds do something similar in that they do a display to attract birds, but they don't do it in actual bower. And um, also birds of paradise display as well up in New Guinea and a few species in Australia as well. So a lot of birds display to attract their mates, but these bower birds are quite unique in that they build this little shelter and they decorate it with trinkets and shells and all sorts of stuff. And um, this man, Norman Chaffer, was a pioneer. And in fact, um, and he made a, he, he wrote this, this was in a library. You can see how many times it was borrowed from the library there. It's got the library um, uh, dates on there, the stamps on there. And um, he was prolific. I'll read a little bit. This is a book I have, which mentions Norman Chaffer. Peter Slater. Um, I should have checked. I'm not sure whether Peter might, I think he's still alive. His wife died a little while ago, but he might not be. And his son Raoul is a, a bird photographer as well. But Peter Slater was a, um, he not only takes photographs, but he also um, uh, illustrates birds as well with drawings. So this book is called Masterpieces of Australian Bird Photography. Uh, masterpieces, yeah. And, and he, he goes through a whole list of bird photographers that never would have seen the digital world that we know. And um, I'll just read a little bit about what he's got about Norman Schaffer in here. And uh, he did a lot of black and white, of course. There's a, there's a um, what they call a rock warbler by Norman Schaffer in black and white and uh, being frozen with the flash. Let's have a look. I'll just read out. Um, And this is what um, Peter Slater is saying. I don't think it would be unfair to such legendary photographers, and he lists a whole pile of them, as uh, well-known Australian photographers, Ramsey, Charland, Little John, Hindwood. Uh, I don't think it would be unfair to suggest that Norman Schaffer, or Chaffer, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, is the grand master of Australian bird photography. Well, that's back when this was written. This was written back about 1980, I think, or something like that. When was it? I should, I should have a look and see. It was, uh, I don't suppose it really matters. <laughs> it was a while ago. There's no digital photography in this book. Um, and um, his career as a photographer has encompassed a period of 60 years, during which time his pictures have illustrated literally dozens of books as well as journals and magazines in many parts of the world. At least part of the present enthusiasm for wildlife conservation can be traced to the initial influence of his movie films, as well as to his still photography. And a number of keen ornithologists trace the awakening of their interest to their attendance at a Chaffer illustrated lecture. It is surprising and a source of some regret on my part that he has not produced a book of his own containing his best pictures, 
and some of the thousands of memories he must have of days spent with birds. But um, I'm not sure whether this book that I showed you um, was published after this was written. Um, a lot of these guys were, uh, they all knew each other, all the early bird photographers and bird illustrators for that matter. And uh, I've got books by a lot of them. They all used to uh, be members, or a lot of them were members of the um, Royal Australian Ornithologist Union. And uh, Norman Chaffer was actually the, the president of the Royal Australasian R-A-A-O-U, I think, no, R-A-O-U, in 1956 and gave an address. And uh, he, this is part of his address he did back then. Uh, I have sometimes queried the reason why so many people spend so much time and effort in photographing birds. In my own case, it is primarily because I'm keenly interested in nature study, particularly ornithology, and I've en endeavoured to secure a lifelike record of the interesting creatures I've seen. The securing of such photographs compels the photographer to spend long periods of time in close proximity to his subject, and he obtains thereby more intimate glimpses of the fascinating home life of the bird than would otherwise be observed. I'll leave that a little bit here. We have in our unique avifauna, a rich field for the camera's work, the camera worker to exploit. And as a nature lover, I can't think of any pastime more fascinating or rewarding. I can say amen to that. I think it's a great um, activity, pastime, career for many people. And of course, some of the, um, the photographers we have around the world these days are exquisite. We have even in Australia our own Jan Wegener. Not sure how you pronounce that, Jan, but if you look on YouTube, you'll find Jan, he's brilliant at uh, the photography he does of Australian birds. And he wasn't born in Australia either, as, as many of our photographers and people, we have lots of people coming from other countries to live in Australia. So there you go. Uh, masterpieces of Australian bird photography. A lot of the, the actual... Uh, RAOU, Royal Australian Ornithology, Royal Australian Ornithology Union, they actually produced a book called the, the Emu. And I've got this beautiful book I got in Canberra a few years back called uh, The Flight of the Emu. A um, bit of a catchy phrase, seeing that emus don't fly. A um, hundred years of Australian ornithology, 1901 to 201. And it's a fantastic history book and summary of all the people that were involved. Uh, in photography from right in the early days up until two, uh, 2001. Um, there's a little bit here about, um, I might have quoted this before, about Norman Schaffer. They've got little pen pictures of all the photographers back in the day. Norman Schaffer, 1899 to 1992, OAM. He was an Order of Australia, uh, member of the Order of Australia. He, he was recognised for his um, contribution. Uh, on the Queen's birthday, I would imagine. Chaffer was a lifetime director of W. Chaffer and Sons Proprietary Limited, a leather manufacturing enterprise founded by his father in 1887. Keen photographer of native birds, the first person to photograph many species, a pioneer of colour cinematography and a winner of many awards. Published articles in National Geographic and he wrote In Quest of Bowerbirds, 1984 was when this book was written. So um, there you go. What's happened now? I've lost my connection. Now it's come back. Sorry. I don't know how much of that you got. Are we still recording? No, we are still recording. Anyway, um, that was a little bit about um, Norman Schaffer. So I have to have a look and see what, uh, what I've got on the, my screen went dead then, so I don't know whether I was recording or not. Hopefully I was. So um, let's have a look, and if it's no good, I'll um, go back and do it again. But that's just a shout out to um, uh, photographers, people who are interested in bird books and uh, history of bird photography, both around the world and particularly in Australia, where I come from. And uh, it's, it's just a wonderful pastime. If you can get hold of some of these older books, and I have heaps of them. I go to secondhand bookshops and find them and at very reasonable prices and a lot of overseas titles as well. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting. A little bit of a, a look up the bowerbirds and find out if they're found in other parts of the world. I don't think they are, but they may have similar habits to other birds. Uh, you may have them up in New Guinea, which is not far from Australia and in Indonesia, possibly. I don't know. 
uh, a part in there also says that there are amazing mimics of other birds, like the Australia's lyrebird is a, an amazing mimic of other birds, but the bowerbird does the same thing. And in fact, there's about oh, several species of birds in Australia and possibly overseas, but many species of birds in Australia, more than 15 species, I think, are mimics of other sounds, not just bird sounds, but just um, uh, natural happenings and also um, domestic happenings, machinery, cars, camera, sh shutters going off, whatever. <coughs> so it's a fascinating subject, isn't it? But anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope that'll get, get you to start letting your fingers do the walking and look up a few things I've been talking about and people. And um, like if you like, subscribe if you wish, and I'll see you next time. And hopefully I've got most of this on, on uh, camera. We'll have a look now. I'll just get out and have a look.